Your contract legally compels you to harvest this artifact. Okay, I'll harvest it. You're compelling me. If only to shut you up. Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we are going to, hopefully, at least by the end of the episode, get some steel production going. That is the plan. Uh, I do have some things to update you guys on, however. Um, the first thing is that I completely redid my storage setup here um, and made it so that any overflow that we get is automatically fed into the awesome sink here and i also um set up three sections of three of these uh storage facilities with smart splitters to make that happen so basically let me explain it to actually you know what no we're gonna do something a little bit different and explain it at the same time um i'm just gonna kind of re go through a little bit of what i did i I was going to do a full episode on this, and then I decided not to. Um, I decided I'd, I'd just kind of give you a, a quick um, recap of what I did. Uh, just because I really, you know, we really need to get going on steel. Um, and, you know, every time I have to go back to the old factory, it just takes forever to get there. And I need, we want to get the hyper, I want to get the hyper tubes going, and we need steel production going for that. So I want to really prioritize that. That being said, though, let's take a little bit of time, and let me just kind of show you what I did. Um, I need some AI limiters. So I got some of those over here. Uh, let's grab those. Okay, so I uh, went ahead and taught myself, not that it was difficult, but I taught myself how to use the blueprint um, designer. And so I'm going to pop this down. We're going to, um, you know, we're obviously going to use this and I'm going to probably have a, a, you know, well, I am going to have a permanent location for it. I just haven't figured that out yet. Um, but what happened was I, you know, I logged into the game sometime after the last episode and I noticed two of my three conveyor lines were stalled. And that was because, you know, um, I had filled up to, you know, two products. And so it just, everything stopped. Right. And so what I did then is I decided, okay, well, what I need to do is fix this with smart splitters so that way any overflow just goes into the sink and it keeps, you know, everything else flowing. Plus it, you know, earns its coupons too. Um, so what I did was I created three different configurations um, to make this, you know, to make this all work. So I'm going to rebuild the first configuration. Uh, so in the, the designer itself, um, I have a, a category that I created called storage, and then I've got a two high, a six high, and a ten high uh, uh, template. So let's grab the two high, and um, oh, I'm missing. Never mind, I'm missing some uh, quartz crystal thingamadoos. Let me go grab those really quick. I should have some over here. Uh, yes, I do. Let's grab those. Uh, we need those for the signs that are on the front of these. And obviously, you do have to have the, all the stuff in your inventory to, to load up a blueprint because it uses actual materials, right? Uh, okay, so let's load up the two high. Um, and the cool thing about this, guys, is that, you know, once you create a blueprint and save it, it's a template and you can use it over and over and over, which is really neat. So um, I can build another two high, um, you know, and, and continue adding on to or, or a six, uh, yeah, six high or a ten high. Um, you know, to keep adding on to our storage, which of course we'll have to do as we start adding more and more products to our, our thingy here. But uh, basically the way this works is that we have um, on the front, I, I just, you know, put some signs with my kind of, you know, factory theme design and it's all generic. So that way you can adjust it, you know, change it to whatever you want. And then everything is Mark three here. So all the lips and all the belts are Mark three. And this is the input here. And it's a smart splitter. And so basically what it does is um, when you when you hook it up, whatever you are planning on storing in here, 
you set that on the left hand side so for example I was um, my, the first section uh, we did concrete why is that not what the hell there we go uh, so I, I signed that to concrete and then the middle one is already set up to pass through anything else that's not explicitly defined so that basically means anything except for concrete and then the right output does overflow okay um, and then what I did in uh, for the second one is I assigned this one to cable and then anything that's not cable goes straight through the center output and overflow goes out the right so in other words if the cable bin fills up and it runs into cable then it's going to throw it out to the right hand side and then this one was set up for um, screws so same thing it'll pass anything through the center output except for screws screws it'll send out the left output and if screws are are, are you know if, if this bin is completely full then it'll send the overflow out here so the overflow comes out the what are the right hand sides of each of these splitters because they're all going this direction they come into this merger and then this merger um just you know sends it out the belt and then sends it to the awesome sink so that's exactly what we have going on over here um so yeah so this one's set for concrete this one's set for cable and this one is set for screws and we already have uh, a full bin of we're getting close on concrete we have a full bin of cable and so you can see that it's sending the cable out the overflow and just throwing that right down into the awesome sink here um, and making us coupons and it'll never it'll never back up because it'll just um, you know it'll just keep keep moving and so the line will never back up oh uh, the other thing I did too by the way is I I upgraded all of my lines all the way down to mark three so everything's coming in you know, you know a lot faster right okay so yeah and that's pretty much it the only difference between this side and this side is that this you know these are higher uh, so these are six high and these are 10 high in terms of you know the the ticks on the on the conveyor and I did it that way so that it would match the height of course of these conveyor lines coming in through the wall uh, conveyor ports this last one is uh, only use utilizing at the moment copper sheeting um, because I don't have I, I only have a total of 10 products so these are just not doing anything at the moment but when we're ready to add another product to it you know then we can cross that bridge when we come to it um, so what I did was I actually um, um, oh yeah right this top line that's coming in actually has four products on it right so so I had to so I had to send out the copper sheeting um, out the center and then have it wrap around and go into the input of the next little section here and I had to do that little wrap around thing because it was other, otherwise it was too close for the lift to uh, I, I mean I could actually fit it but it was like clipping so bad that it was giving me indigestion so <laughs> I had to kind of kind of do a little bit of jury rigging to get it to work but once we get to the point where um, well, the thing is, is yeah, th this is unless I change something on the other, and this is always going to have four products coming down the line. So, I'll yeah, I'll figure that out when the time comes. But anyway, the whole point in all of that is that you know you anything you build inside of this grid, um, then you can save it, and then you can rebuild the whole entire thing, of course, um, and it's just really nice. So we can clear the the designer, and it puts all of the parts back into here. And then if we uh, if we wanted to load say like the 10 high one, then it loads that one up for us. And the only reason we would load it here again is if we wanted to make some kind of a modification to the template itself. If we just want to build it out in the field, um, then we access it you know just from our build gun. So we just go to blueprints, and I uh, I created like a, a a separate folder for storage specific. Uh, templates and then if we want to build the 10 high we just select it there make sure you got the stuff in your inventory and then you can build it you know wherever you want it so pretty cool um, very much enjoy uh, working with this blueprint designer and it's just gonna make life a lot simpler so we will oh 
<laughs> it left the forest signs. Uh, so we'll, uh, you know, we'll definitely be making use of that as time goes on. Okay, but that's not its really you know, its permanent location, so we won't keep it there. All right, guys. So name of the game is to get going with steel. And even before we do that, actually. Uh, I want to get the hub moved down here just because the hub's going to live down here permanently. So I guess I should probably do that next. Go grab it and bring it down here because I can't, you can't put up two simultaneous hubs. Uh, right? Yeah, you can only build one, it says, right? Okay, so um, I'm going to go grab that. I'm going to cut the camera, go grab that from the other factory, bring it down here, get it in place. And then the the second task, in fact, you know what? We should start using our to-do list again. So let's do this. We're going to say uh, move hub. And then we're going to make iron conveyor road. And then start I think we're gonna start with beam production we got to do beam pipe and encased beams but I want one line that's just doing nothing but making beams because we need those for our mark 3 stuff among other things and I want one line that's doing nothing but making pipes because we need those for hyper tubes among other things so let's start with beams so we're gonna start uh, beam production So those are our, our three objectives for today's episode. Okay, so let's do with the, uh, let's get the hub going first. And like I said, I will. I'm just gonna go. Whoops! Uh, I'm gonna go grab that, and I'll meet you guys back here, and we'll figure out where we're gonna set the probably the permanent location of the hub. All right, guys, we're back. Um, let's go ahead and pick up um, all of these uh wait what oh, it's not let me um select these other ones dismantle try it again there it goes that was weird okay um that's gonna have to go for now too so let's just uh pick all that up <clears throat> that's not really contributing a ton anyways but figured I'd do something with that coal instead of just having to sit there but anyway all right so what we're gonna do is we're going to get the hub and we want to put it so that the rocket is on this side and the corner of it is in the corner of these two tiles that's good okay and that may very well be the permanent location of our hub moving forward nice um okay so i i want what i want to do next is i want to i, I just got a whole bunch of crap like in these little cases i want to kind of get that a little bit better organized so let me take care of that and then i'll bring you back for the next part all right guys i'm back and uh, got all my organization taken care of so this is basically bio stuff quartz stuff sulfur stuff and steel stuff uh all right so next order business is we need to get iron down here uh, we have some iron pretty close by and it is also pure it's just gonna be right over there 610 meters away so we have one two three pure nodes way over there and then some more you know further out but of course we're going to take advantage of these first so let's go check those out i should have enough materials to pretty much do everything we need to do out in the field and uh see what what it's going to take to get that stuff down here um yeah, I'm also going to be concreting in all of this, pretty much all of that area too. But let's just...
Yeah, I think what I'll do, actually, now that I think more about this a little bit, is get out of here. Let's actually... Okay, so I think for, for our, our builds moving forward, I think we're going to use underfloors. Um, you know, just to keep things nice and neat. But I think what we'll do is we'll we'll make this a a conveyor road. Well, not I don't know if road's the right word, but this will be be kind of a conveyor pathway coming into the factory this way. Because you know, if the, I mean, if the factory is going to be going. All along in through here anyways, which it is. That's the plan anyway. It doesn't make sense to run belts all the way here and try to route it up that way. That's kind of what I'm thinking here. Alright, so let's do... Well, let's just take this all the way to the shore. Okay. But, um, the nodes are actually up there so we're probably going to run into the yeah we're going to run into the cliff there so let's let's build this way <clears throat> we would have yeah we would have clipped into that plus we still have these overhangs anyways to deal with so I think I'll just take it there's a hard drive up there we could go after <clears throat> I'll just take it this far oh you know that reminds me of something else too um, where is there we go I I don't think we actually have an iron yeah we don't have an alternate iron ingot recipe <clears throat> And the reason that's significant is because for steel, we have a pretty nice alternate steel recipe that require that takes iron ingots and produces twice as many using a foundry and uses less coal <laughs> on top of that. So I really would like to take advantage of that, but it'd be kind of nice if we if we had a little bit better iron recipe. So there are two hard drives really close to the base. There's this one here, and then there's also one off over on the beach is where the oil, uh, where the oil thingies are. So let's, um, let's go ahead and grab this one and see if we can actually get ourselves an iron ingot recipe. Yeah, we're, we're, we have so much space for this factory. It's just amazing. I mean, all the space we could ever want to use, I think, you know. That gets to the falls, that goes down into the abyss. Um, okay, we'll go this far. Whether or not we utilize anything over in this area is, remains to be seen. But I'm just going to run these for now anyway so we can get up there to get to that hard drive. Okay. I don't know if there's any nasties up there or not. We should expect there to be. What's that? There's really nothing up here guarding this, huh? I'm suspicious. <laughs> okay, what do you want? Uh, we got what you want. Excellent, okay. We got some screws and uh, uh, some wire and screws. Don't think there's anything else up here.
Okay, let's get scanning on that. All right, let's go back and get our explorer and then go find these iron nodes. Actually, let's go grab that other hard drive real quick, too, so that way we can pop it in once we're finished with the first one. Okay, I'm trying to remember exactly where that drive is. <clears throat> we should... Oh, I guess we do have an access up there. Um, we're almost certainly going to have some resistance coming over here. We already do. Jeez. Okay, let's go. Wonder what's inside of here. Probably oh shit. Uh, probably a Mercer sphere, maybe. Um. Ow. Okay, let's go. We don't really, really need to kill those guys right now. There. Oh, here it is. Okay. And there's a yellow slug over here too. So we'll get both of those. We've got a big plasma spitter over here. <clears throat> and a big hog, little hog combo up that way. I hear more footsteps over this way. Another big guy. It's a slaughter. It's a rebar slaughter. Okay, we got uh, 21 computers. Oh, wow. Those look like circuit boards, not computers. Some cables, reinforced plates, heavy modular frames. There's a lot of loot over here. Big hog over that way. All right, what do you need? Nothing. It's free. <laughs> nice. We like free. Okay, let's get the yellow slug over here. We do have a big boy hog, so uh, I should probably top off too. So he's probably on the other side of this little knoll here. Oh, there he is. this before he gets over here. Whoa! This parachute definitely makes me more maneuverable. Let's grab this quartz. We will definitely get some quartz and sulfur and Katerium going. In fact, we need the Katerium for our awesome 120 per minute wire uh, production recipe that we found. I'm going to see if I can paraglide back across here. Why? Because it's fun. That's why. That's all you need to know. <laughs> I would kind of like to know what's in here, though. Unbelievable. <laughs> we got to do it now. Just it's the principle of the thing. Ah, oh, it was a damn sloop. Yeah, that was not worth our time or explosives. Well, maybe it will be once we figure out what those damn things are actually used for. I don't remember seeing the message, so I don't know if that other hard drive is done yet. It probably is. We need to put our other shops and stuff down. 
Beautiful. Okay, we got those in place. Now, let's check this. Ooh, look at that. Alternate encased industrial pipe. Uh, alternate steel frame. No, I don't think we need that. Fine concrete. 25 per minute using limestone and silicon. Nah, but we should definitely look at this. So this gives us four per minute. And it uses piping instead of beams. How interesting. Um, all right, let me look up um, the normal recipes for this. Okay, so this is the only other alternate recipe for encased industrial beams. Um, and it's actually two less per minute than the normal recipe. But it also uses 10 less concrete. Um, I, I don't know. I'm kind of... I don't like the fact that it gives us less per minute, even though, you know, it, it may be cheaper to make. I, I'm not a fan, I gotta say. I'm not, I don't think I'm a fan of that. It requires seven steel pipe versus four steel beams. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not a fan of this because it's a little cheaper to make pipes than beams, but it takes more pipes to make less of these than less beams to make more of these, and you know, per minute. It just, I, I, I think that recipe sucks. So we're gonna re-roll this one. Okay. All right. Anyway, let's get back on track here. I got massively sidetracked, but that's the story of my life. Um. And uh, let's let's see if we can find these iron nodes and get going on those. All right, we got some assholes up here. I strongly advise you to harvest this specimen. Comply. You are so lucky that you found this most valuable artifact. Harvest it. Harvest it. I like the way they make that sound demonic. Picking up multiple fixed personnel in like the you area. got this friendly the alien voice and then all of a sudden it turns into late. like a possessed it. Ooh, there's a that's uranium. We gotta be careful of that. Comply. Where did you go? Oh, there's another pod thingy up there. You to harvest this artifact. Okay, I'll harvest it. You're compelling me. If only to shut you up. There's the node. Or the first one, anyway. Okay, so we got a little spitter around here. Do we got a... Something more significant than that? All right, nice. Pure iron node, baby. Okay, so what I'm kind of thinking here is we bring this just right to the west and over the edge of the cliff and down to our little road down there. Seems to make the most sense to me. Be easy to get power up here and everything. Now, let's do... Let me see where the other nodes are. Okay, there's one back off to the left, so we could also just run straight out to the road from here. And... I think we'll not worry about that one for now. We These two should get us started. But we'll, we will set up both of these. Okay, so let's get some 4-meter foundations. Press Control to be on the global grid. We want to be fa there we go that's per that's facing the cardinal direction so what I think I'm gonna do is just do this long just for a guide we won't keep it like this um 
This should do 120. Oh, no, it does 240. Oh, right, because it's a pure node. Um, yeah, right. Okay, so we're going to overclock this so that it does 270 to match the 270 tier 3 uh, belt. So what we want to do is face this this way and... That's probably right. Okay, so we want this to do 270. All right, alternate cheap silica, alternate charcoal, alternate fused quick wire. And not a fan of any of them, to be honest with you. Let's re-roll again. I think that's all the higher we need to go. Okay, that's level, correct? Yes, that is level. Is that, is that level two? I think it is. Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, nice. That worked out. Okay, so we're gonna bring this to, right to the edge there so that we can then do a, a lift down. Press control, global grid. Production, minor mark two, make sure it's heading or facing to the west. I'm thinking probably go up maybe two and overclock you to 270. Don't know if I want to actually go down that low with it though. I think we want to go up to at least the first height of a riser, a uh, conveyor stacking conveyor thingy. Oh, steel beams were missing. All right, let me go back and get some of those real quick. And we'll also run some power on the way back. Hey, actually, we haven't even looked at these new big-ass power pulls. Those also require steel beams. Those are cool looking though. All right, guys, I got to thinking, um, it might be actually kind of neat to run um, some big power lines. So what I'm thinking, it, I believe they take a four by four platform and so if we grab this, and I can't tell which direction. Okay, so what if we put that here? Um, it's really hard to tell if it's centered or not. I'm gonna guess that that's probably the center. No, it's not. Can still come over a little bit. That might be it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So that centers it. Nice. So I guess, um, it's okay. I see what's going on here. So it's got a, all right, 
right, hold on. If we put this right here, identical building is already built there. What? Okay. Hmm. So then can we also... Well, okay, is that... Does that mean the power is now connected on this? I'm confused. Oh, okay. I thought I had to actually connect to those insulators, but it looks like... It looks like you just connect to this one down here, and then... I guess we have to assume that it has some cabling going up to the big insulators. That's interesting. All right, let's uh, let's see how far down this thing will go. Wow, it goes quite a ways down. Look at this, my goodness. All the way to here. And now that I kind of know what to look for uh, with these the spacing on these, I can get it right in the center. Oh, that is neat. And oh man, are we are we clipping into our coal line though? Our coal smokestack? It's really damn close. Oh no, that one is though. Shit. Damn it, Jim! I think that's where we want it to be. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And that looks right. Sweet. I think that's right. the right spot there, though. Okay. Nice. All right, guys, so what I did is I took the uh, original tower and I moved it back and put a, a new one here, turned the other direction, and we should be able to just look into it just like that. Okay, yeah, that should work. On the network, cool. All right, so now what we want to do is uh, run it this way, and we, we'll probably eventually run some lines off up that way too so I'm gonna just temporarily zoop this out here so we have you know so we can keep it nice and straight that looks correct and we'll put it right Let's try it right there. Right there. Sweet. Okay, let's head on down here. And grab the Mark III belt, bring it down to here. Except for that I want it to be, I think probably right about there. I'm just guessing at the moment. Um, let's, let's confirm if that is indeed the right height. Almost makes me look like I know what I'm doing. I think that'll work. I 
Yeah. That's better. All right, so that's where it goes there. Go over two and raise it up one. Mm, that might be too low. Let's see. Is that is that going up? No, that's level. Okay. It's just the perspectives are really weird sometimes when you're doing this stuff. Sometimes things look level and they're not, and other times vice versa. Okay, so I brought the iron uh, to this this point here. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I'm just going to leave it there for now, uh, and we'll figure out how to actually bring it in once we you know, start getting the, the machines down. Okay, we have another hard drive to check. I think we do anyway. All right, what do we got here? Alternate pure caterium ingot, 12 per minute. That's water and two caterium. Alternate steamed copper sheet, 22 and a half per minute. Or pure quartz crystal. Okay, I'm gonna need to look up the original recipes of these things. All right, so the normal caterium takes three caterium ore and makes 15 per minute. The pure caterium takes two ore and two water and only makes 12 per minute. Uh, why? Plus it requires a refinery on top of that. Why the hell would you ever do that? <laughs> I mean, you save one caterium ore. Caterium ore is infinite. It's inexhaustible. That doesn't make any sense at all. That is the only other al alternate recipe for Caterium. But, yeah. It uses more resources. It requires a refinery. And it gives you less product. I, I, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. Okay. Whatever. Um... Maybe some of these are designed just to be shitty, you know, to make it more of a crapshoot. Perhaps what that's what's going on here. I don't know. Most of them are better than the normal, but not all of them, apparently. Okay, let's see. What was the other thing? It was, um... Oh, copper sheets. Okay, let's take a look at that one. Okay, so normal copper sheet takes two copper and produces ten per minute. Two copper ingot. The steamed copper sheet takes three copper and three water and a refinery and gives 22 and a half per minute. So it gives you all, a little more than twice as much. But still, I mean, it's one and a half more times copper and it's water and it's a refinery. I don't see that as being particularly amazing either in the, the long run. Not to mention we, we, we didn't have access to a, ref a refinery yet anyways. Not that that really matters in the long run. Uh, all right. Let's look at the quartz crystal recipe. Okay. Normal quartz takes five quartz and produces 22 and a half per minute. Pure quartz crystal takes nine quartz, five water, and a refinery, but it makes 52 and a half per minute. 40. So it's a little more than half. But almost twice as much quartz, plus five water, plus... Yeah, I don't like these, man. These recipes suck. They're all terrible, in my opinion. Um, okay, well, let's just re-roll again. We're not wasting a hard drive on a shitty recipe. Okay, so um, we went ahead and we moved our hub and we made our iron road. I'll tell you what I'm going to do in regards to beam production. We're going to set up a temporary, we're going to do a temporary thing over here. Um, and in fact... I'm even going to do it over across the road here. 
Okay, so if we build... We're just going to build a foundry. Okay, so let's put one foundry there and one foundry there. Okay, so we get power to them. Um, yeah, see, this is the one that takes the iron and less coal. But I think for now, for the temporary setup, we're just going to go with the normal recipe. Because then I have to set up more machines and... I don't mind doing that for a permanent setup, but not for a temporary. You know what, too? This will probably look better if we... kind of hide the angle back behind here. Now we just need two constructors, one on beams and one on um, pipes. You do beams, you do pipes. to be super fast. All right, all we have to do now is just get some coal down here. Yeah, that's correct. We will reconnect this so it goes into the splitter. And we're good. Okay, so that gives us a temporary beam and pipe setup. So we're, you know, so we're making that stuff because we need it while I work on the permanent installation, which is going to take place on this, in this whole section here. But that's something I got to plan. I'm, that's not something I'm going to just, you know, uh, make up as I go, so, so to speak, because there's, there's going to be a lot more involved. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video. And we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.